Summary of Nervous Conditions by Sitsi Dangaremka. The story is told by a woman called Tambu. She says she wasn't sad when her brother Namo died. She would want to explain how she came to feel that way and share the stories of her mother Mainini, Aunt Maiguru, and cousin Nayasha. Also, she would like to relate the stories of her Aunt Lucia. Before Namo dies in 1968, Tambu starts to dislike him. Her uncle Babamukaru, who was very smart, asked that Namo start school early. In 1960, Babamukaru, his wife Maiguru, and their two children, Nayasha and Chido, went to England to study. Tambu's family couldn't send her to school after her first year because he was gone. Tambu didn't need to go to school, according to Jeremiah. Mainini, on the other hand, told Tambu that she needed to learn how to be a woman and make adjustments. Tambu instead asked for corn to grow so she could sell it and pay for her own schooling. When the corn was ready, the cobs started falling off. Tambu found out that Namo was taking them at Sunday school and beat him up. Mr. Matimba, a teacher, stopped the fight and listened to Tambu's story. He then offered to help her sell her corn in Umtalai. Mr. Matimba gets 10 pounds for Tambu's schooling by telling a white woman that Tambu is an orphan. Jeremiah is very angry, but Mr. Matimba says that Tambu will be able to work and help support the family if she goes to school. For the next two years, she goes to school. When Babamukaru and his family come back from England, Tambu finds out what Mainini meant by the weight of womanhood, she isn't allowed to go to the airport to meet her family, and Namo takes over Nayasha and Chido. Tambu also finds out that her cousins don't remember Shona anymore, which makes her feel like she's all alone. Babamukaru chooses to take Namo with him to his mission school during the party. Tambu can't go because she's a girl, and Namo makes sure to tell her that. Over the next few years, Namo forgets about Shona and tries everything he can to avoid going to the farm. He looks down on his poor family and irritates Tambu whenever he can. In 1968, when the school year is over, Namo doesn't take the bus home as planned. Babamukaru and Maiguru come by car late at night to tell the village that Namo has died from mumps. Babamukaru plans to take Tambu to the mission after the funeral. Tambu is happy to find a clean, well-fed, and smart version of herself at the mission. She also thinks that, unlike Namo, she won't look down on life on the farm. Tambu is shocked when Babamukaru drives up the driveway in his car. The house is huge, and there is a small house just for cars. She feels like she is not good enough and that Babamukaru is richer than she ever thought possible. Tambu is scared when two big guard dogs bark at her, but the housegirl Anna tells her she's safe. Tambu goes through the kitchen to get into the house. It's clean and looks expensive to Tambu, but the older narrator points out that there are signs that Babamukaru and Maiguru are trying to save money. Tambu is surprised by how friendly Nyasha is to him. Anna takes Tambu into the living room, which is very fancy. Tambu can see why Namo thinks she is better than everyone else. The beauty is dangerous, and she thinks Babamukaru is a god. Tambu tries to greet Maiguru in a serious way, but Maiguru greets her in a casual way. Tambu is surprised by how many cookies and how hot the tea are. Maiguru asks Nyasha to meet Tambu in a polite way, but Nyasha is rude and ignores her, which surprises Tambu. Maiguru just laughs it off and says that her kids speak too much English. She then shows Tambu to Nyasha's room, which the two girls will share. Maiguru is upset that Nyasha is reading Lady Chatterley's Lover, but she shows Tambu her things and then leaves the girls. Once the girls start talking, Nyasha says that she didn't talk to Tambu at the party after she got back from England because she was afraid. She is sad that she and Cheeto are a mix of different cultures, which their parents hate. Tambu is worried that she won't be able to eat enough at dinner because there are so many interesting foods on the table. Baba Mukaru shows up late, doesn't want to talk, and is upset that there's no gravy. Babamukaru takes Lady Chatterley's lover while Nyasha is making gravy. Nyasha thinks it was taken by Maiguru. Tambo feels bad about herself at dinner, especially when Maiguru gives her a spoon and feeds her sadza. 
Tambu talks to Babamukuru in the living room after dinner. He tells her how much he has to give up to pay for her schooling and how it is her job to take care of the family. Tambu doesn't put on clothes when she goes back to her room, and she tries to hide the fact that she doesn't know how to turn off the light. Tambu takes a bath the next morning and tries hard to eat food. School is easy for her, which is good. Everyone likes Tambu, but no one likes Nyasha. Soon, Tambu starts to get her period. At first, she doesn't want to use pads, but Nyasha talks her into it. She also finds out that my guru has a master's degree but doesn't decide how much she gets paid. Tambu feels bad for my guru, but she's married to Babamukuru, so she doesn't think her situation is that bad. During Tambu's first year at the mission, Nyasha takes her first tests in front of the public right before Christmas. She worries a lot about them and studies all the time. The school has a Christmas party after the tests. The dance is fun for Nyasha, Tambu, and Chido, and Nyasha's date follows them home. Chido and Tambu are waiting for Nyasha at home, but they get tired of waiting and go to the house without her. Baba Mukuru understands that they have abandoned Nyasha. When she finally gets there, the two get into a big fight. Baba Mukuru calls Nyasha a whore and beats her. After the fight, Tambu sits outside with Nyasha, scared because she now knows that Baba Mukuru will hurt women in the same way that Namo hurt Tambu because she was a girl when they were kids. After a week, Tambu, Baba Mukuru, and their families go to the farm for Christmas. Their car is full of things to eat, like half an ox. As the oldest wife, my guru is already upset that she will have to do all the cooking. Netsai and Rambanai welcome their guests at the house. Babamukuru is shocked to find that Lucia and Takeshur are on the land. Lucia is Mainini's wild younger sister, and she is pregnant with Takeshur's child. Takeshur has already paid off two wives, but he doesn't want to work. Babamukuru has been telling them to leave for a while. Tambu brings food inside and then goes to see Mainini, who is also pregnant and not feeling well, in her bedroom. The next two are Babamukuru and Maiguru. Nyasha is as rude as you'd expect. Surprisingly, Tet Gladys and Uncle Thomas also come with their spouses and children. As a father, Tet Gladys doesn't have to help with chores, so Maiguru, Nyasha, Tambu, and the service girls do everything. My guru does all of the cooking and has a hard time dividing up the meat, which quickly goes green. She makes special rice for the patriarchal family on her Dover stove. Baba Mukuru calls a family meeting after the new year to talk about Lucia and Takeshur. The women who were left out argue with each other and decide to listen in. They hear Takeshur say that Lucia is a witch. Lucia then comes in, grabs Takeshur by the ears, and tells him that he and Mainini should leave. Jeremiah suggests they hire a medium to rid the family of its bad things, but Babamukuru says the real problem is that Jeremiah and Mainini aren't married and are living in sin. He wants to have a wedding for them. Even though Tambu's family laughs about the wedding, it makes her feel very scared. She thinks that a wedding would make her parents look silly, but she also thinks that she can't be mad at Babamukuru. After three weeks, when Tambu goes back to the job, everything goes back to normal. In March, Mainini has a boy, and while she is in the mission hospital, Lucia asks Babamukuru to help her find a job. After a week, he does what he said he would. Tambu is amazed, but Nyasha says that people like Babamukuru have to help people like Lucia. Tambu's pain keeps getting worse as the wedding day gets closer. Even though her dress for the wedding party fits perfectly, she knows she doesn't want to go. Tambu has an out-of-body experience on the day of the wedding, which makes her decide not to go. After that, Baba Mukuru gives her 15 lashes and makes her do Anna's jobs for two weeks. Lucia comes to visit and is upset by this. Later, my guru tells Baba Mukuru that she doesn't like cooking for his family. The next morning, she leaves. She is gone for a week until Cheeto calls, tells Nyasha where my guru is, and Baba Mukuru goes to get her. Catholic women show up at the end of the term. They give the kids a test that turns out to be a test for getting into the Catholic school. 
Tambu has the skills to pass and win a grant because she has been reading Nyasha's books and talking with her about different ideas. Nyasha tells Tambu not to go because the nuns would try to change her into their way of life. Baba Mukuru agrees with Nyasha, but my guru doesn't. She stands up to her husband and tells Tambu to leave. Baba Mukuru and Jeremiah talk about the Catholic school over Christmas and decide that Tambu should go. Tambu is happy, but Mainini worries that Tambu might die. Mainini gets sick from being worried, and she doesn't feel better until Lucia comes to see her for a few days. Tambu takes the bus back to the mission and is excited to see Nyasha, but Nyasha isn't there. Tambu finds her in a classroom where she is learning. Baba Mukuru makes Nyasha eat all of her food at dinner, but Tambu hears her throw it up afterward. Tambu is still very excited about going to the Catholic school. Baba Mukuru and her are going to school with Nyasha. Tambu is one of six black kids, which is a lot. She focuses on her studies, and even though Nyasha sends her letters, some of which are worrying, she doesn't answer them. Tambu doesn't see Nyasha again until August, when she's just bones. She throws up every time she eats, and one night she passes out in her food. Late that night, Nyasha loses her mind and screams that they are to blame for what has happened to her. The next day, Baba Mukuru takes her to see a shrink. The psychiatrist says that Africans don't suffer like this, but another psychiatrist checks Nyasha into a clinic. Tambo goes home for a few weeks, where Mainini tells him that their Englishness will kill them all. But Tambo goes back to school and doesn't start to wonder about anything until years later when she decides to write this story. About the author. Sitsi Dangaremga was born in Rhodesia, which is now called Zimbabwe. She lived in England for a few years when she was young. At age six, she went back to Rhodesia. She went to high school in Umtale at a Christian school and then went back to England to go to Cambridge. She went there to study medicine, but she left in 1979 to go back to Rhodesia, just a few months before the country became independent and changed its name to Zimbabwe. After that, she went to the University of Zimbabwe to study psychology and worked as a copywriter for a marketing firm. She started writing plays and joined a neighborhood theater group around this time. In the middle of the 1980s, she started publishing short stories and plays that got good reviews. In 1988, she wrote Nervous Conditions, which was the last of these works. In 1989, the book was chosen as the winner of the Commonwealth Writers' Prize for Africa. Even though she was successful, Dangaremga stopped writing novels for almost 20 years. During that time, she studied film in Berlin and made several movies that have been shown at important international film festivals. She completed Tambu's second narrative in 2006 and the planned trilogy in 2018, more than 30 years after starting it. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.